and welcome to another lecture session of introduction to astrophysical fluids. Now uh, we have already started discussing the plasmas and we said some I mean we have already introduced some very basic concepts of plasma how to uh, define a plasma how to characterize a plasma how to describe a plasma and we saw that as plasma is a an ensemble or a, I mean is a system consisting of charged species then um, I mean we need actually two sets of equations so one is for the describing the matter part another is the describe uh, another set is to describe the electromagnetic fields right and for electromagnetic fields we know that we have of course the uh, Maxwell's equations there is no ambiguity about that but how to describe the matter then we have several options and depending on the uh, interests from case to case sometimes we will be discussing uh, we will be tried I mean how to say we will describe plasma uh, in terms of particles where the particle behaviors are important to explain certain phenomena Sometimes we, I mean, try to describe the plasma as a continuum, then we define a plasma fluid, okay, and sometimes we actually need the two, then we talk about hybrid models, as I said, okay. So, um, this really creates a, a very interesting structure of plasma theory, okay, and uh, this is, that's why this is much more vast with respect to the normal hydrodynamic theory. And also as uh, like unlike the normal kinetic ensembles uh, which, is, uh, which is made up of normal neutral gas molecules, a plasma actually consists of particles which always have long range interaction through Coulombic interaction which is totally absent in case of neutral gas molecules. Okay. Um, then the analytical treatment of such a system is also non-trivial uh, non and sometimes becomes very much complex and sometimes even we don't know whether we can uh, treat uh, sufficiently uh, those the sets of equation the systems of equation just by analytics then we have to simulate okay so in this lecture I will give you a very brief overview okay on um, the on the different type of uh, I mean um, how to say different stages of description of a plasma so really I mean there are a lot of uh, mathematical details which I will skip and I will just say very qualitatively how I mean maybe I will take help of some equations which are indispensable otherwise it will be mostly a very superficial guided tour from kinetic aspect to the fluid aspect okay and finally our interest is to talk about the fluid models okay and the corresponding utilities or I mean uh, how to say that um, corresponding importance or applications in case of space and astrophysical uh, context okay so if you uh, remember that we will just uh, um, proceed as we did for normal hydrodynamic case that we consider for even for a plasma that it is an ensemble of uh, of n particles okay but these n particles can be charged okay that is the thing and we consider the gamma space now if you remember from the very uh, lectures of the first week of this course so gamma space is the whole system configuration space where the every single point so gamma space for example for a system within particles and each particle has for example three degrees of freedom in space and three velocity component so a gamma space will be in general of six n dimensions right and plus if you want to include uh, time as one dimension then this will be 6n plus 1 otherwise you just say my gamma space is 6n dimension and time acts as a parameter okay so the in the gamma space the total system configuration at one instant is presented by one single point in the space okay and uh, we can also just just as you uh, know that we can define 
rho n which is the density of this ensemble points okay then we we know that we can also create ensembles okay so uh, and ensemble is nothing but an i mean how to say a collection of points where collection of points uh, i mean just i mean describing the describing the same type of system only differing uh, from each other by the choice of initial conditions okay so then rho n we can uh, define to be the density of such ensemble points and this rho n is of course a function of x1 u1 up to xn un and time as well okay so every every variable has three components because these are vectors so we have two n such variables so it will have six n and then t okay now since uh, i mean unlike a normal uh, system of gas molecules neutral gas molecules here always one charged species is acting with the other by coulombic interaction okay then we actually will be interested to find the joint probability because the one particle's velocity and their position is always governed by another particle okay so for example if this one is getting closer to this one okay irrespective of whether these are i mean of the other uh, irrespective of the positions and the velocities of the other particle there will be some effect as well of course we know from our previous discussion that if the particle is these two particles are very far away so that this particle is actually screened by its neighbor neighboring particles then the uh, effect of this particle to this particle is negligible but in general in general we cannot neglect the effect of any arbitrary particle with the other and then we will be interested to find the joint probability to say that uh, which is fk so fk is a joint probability distribution so uh, which is a function of x1 u1 uh, x2 u2 and also xk uk and t okay so joint probability distributions is such that i mean so this this is what so this is simply the probability that the particle 1 to k have coordinates x1 u1 i mean the for example if we label the particles for example uh, 1 2 okay let me just use this one we just label the particles 1 2 3 4 like this then this joint probability distribution just says that this is the probability distribution so that the particle 1 is at x1 u1 at at a, at a given time okay there should be i mean uh, we are talking about something which is simultaneously occurring and particle 2 will be at x2 u2 particle 3 will be at x3 u3 and particle k will be at xk uk if we specify this all these things then the question is that what is the probability that this uh, i mean these positions and velocity are attained simultaneously okay and so so uh, we we can just say that let's say we have n particles okay and from n particles we just say that we are uh, we are just um, uh, interested in k particles out of n whose velocity and position we have designated already and we want to know the joint probability distribution so that they have this uh, design i mean well, designated positions and velocities at a given time but all the other particles for example particles k plus 1 to n all the k my n minus k particles they can be at any position and velocity okay so if it is the case then of course we know this is given by this this one is given by is equal to v v to the power k okay integration over okay so this is something okay i have to uh, tell you so uh, rho to the power so the, the, v to the power k integration over so this is the volume okay rho n 
डी एक्स के प्लस वन डी यू के प्लस वन अप टू डी एक्स एन यू डी यू एन वेर ऑल दिस के प्लस वन आई मीन ऑल दिस थिंग्स कैन वेरी फ्रॉम माइनस इन्फिनिटी टू प्लस इन्फिनिटी राइट बिकॉज दे कैन हैव एनी पोजिशन एंड मोमेंटम दैट इज द स्टोरी फॉर द रेस्ट इन माइनस के पार्टिकल्स इज इट क्लियर ओके देन द थिंग इज दैट आई मीन if we if we recall the lectures of the first week then we can write a hamiltonian for the macroscopic level ensemble of plasma particles because there is at microscopic level there is no dissipative force okay all the fundamental forces are there and they are actually conserving energy so we can write a hamiltonian for the system and we know that rho n which is the density i mean density of uh, ensemble points this will or rather should satisfy liouville's theorem okay so if you now just use this one this liouville's theorem okay if you just so uh, let me just tell you something like this so um, this is the i mean how to say that so this is the density of ensemble points and this is the joint probability distribution and if you uh, just follow that rho n satisfied liouville's theorem then uh, after integration basically if you really uh, i mean so if you simply see that um, every rho can be actually attained from some probability distribution then you can finally get the evolution equation for the uh, joint probability distribution i mean the joint probability distribution of k uh, k particles okay just a minute so um, once again so this vk is simply introduced just for the normalization purpose and vk is nothing but the uh, volume i mean uh, how to say occupied by k particles okay those k particles for which we are like now interested uh, with a designated uh, position and velocity and uh, then uh, from this one okay you have to actually just follow the same rule as we did for normal hydrodynamic case and then you just take this you just can get this type of equation okay just just write the liouville's theorem with this type of um expressions okay and then you can simply write this uh, the equation for this uh, fk now if k does not say that this is the probability distribution function for kth particle this is uh, a bit confusing here so if k means if k means this is the joint probability distribution of k particles and if it is for example f1 that will be the distribution function of one single particle if it is f2 then it will be the joint distribution function of two particles if it is f3 then this will be the joint distribution function of three particles this type of thing so this is quite complicated actually i don't want to uh, i mean enter into the details of this so if you are interested you can just search to any, i mean search in any book any standard book of plasma physics okay and uh, so you see that delta or statistical mechanics that is also uh, i mean a good choice okay but that that book should contain the statistical mechanics of plasma yeah now you see finally we have an evolution equation for fk and where you can see that this is nothing but the equation where you have this uh, ur dot nabla xr of xk this is the space variation of course and this is the convective type of term and this is the term which comes from the from its gradient in the velocity space okay and here you can actually all of them should be uh, vectors and not very much uh, correct in writing like this so all these things are vector okay and then you will see so this is the uh, this is the force type of term so th this is a force term okay and this is the velocity gradient of fk and this one basically comes as an extra and this one gives you the uh, information about the 
if k plus 1 so it simply says that if you want to evo I mean study the evolution equation for fk that means let's say if you are interested to study the evolution equation of f1 that means how does the single particle distribution function evolve in time okay then you have to know about the information about f2 for example that means how I mean that means at least the functional form of two point joint probability distribution okay. the same thing if you want to know del del t of f2 you have to know about f3 and so on so that will this this gives us a hierarchy of equations and this is known as bbgky hierarchy okay there are five scientists so you just search their names that's you to do that okay and then you will see that uh, this basically creates a problem in closing the systems of equation because at every point if uh, I mean the evolution equation of k uh, of the distribution function of k, k particles include the distribution the knowledge or needs the knowledge of distribution function joint distribution function of k plus 1 particles okay so uh, this is true so that's what I said here the evolution equation of f1 contains f2 and also del t f2 contains f3 and so on so finally we have a problem in closing okay so sometimes if you now just you can write yeah, or rather you can express f2 in terms of f1 and uh, the two particle interaction so you can write always the joint probability distribution of two particles which are interacting with each other as a sum of the as a sum of two terms this one is just the probability distribution um, this one is the product of the two probability distributions of single particles that means this one survives on I mean only this one survives if the two particles are independent now this one is non-zero only two particles are interacting with it with each other right so this one uh, so when the first particle per density and I mean sorry momentum and velocity are independent of that part where the second particles momentum and velocity uh, sorry position and velocity then this one will be the only uh, joint distribution function so that is just for the uh, I mean independent like the independent events okay now this one is the interaction part and this one is non-trivial to understand or non-trivial to determine okay so for example if we just say that if we are interested in first particle and second particle this is the level number of the particles then that will be equal to so f2 of 1 and 2 will be simply f1 1 and f2 2 plus g12 okay similarly you can uh, think of the joint distribution function of three particles 1 2 3 then you have the first term which de designates the product of the three that means if the three particles are non interacting then their joint distribution function would be simply this then f1 should be multiplied with this one that means that if two three are interacting but they are independent of one this is the case then if three one are interacting but they are independent of two and if one two are interacting but they are independent of three all these things are summed because i mean they are the net effect and they are actually mutually exclusive so the total total possibility will be the sum of the three and finally there is a possibility that all the three particles are mutually interacting then you have h123 okay so of course if there is no interaction we have g and h zero so this zero this zero this zero this zero so only this term will survive and in such case you know that the equations the equation for the, i mean the kinetic equation which we should obtain is nothing but something similar to vlasov's equation okay but there is a physics problem that is uh, Vlasov equation is only valid for collisionless systems but for collisionless systems we know that in principle fluid equations cannot be derived because collisionless systems in principle should not relax towards a Maxwellian distribution right.
Although you can always derive the moment equations, but you cannot close the equations. That is the problem. Okay, that's why finally a dynamical theory for the continuum is impossible to write in theory. But uh, if a plasma is in thermodynamic equilibrium, then actually one can find this F1 that the single particle distribution is like this and G at least the two particle interaction uh, function is given by this. So it is again it's a simplified thing and which says that this is not very much different from their individual products but it's just module I mean modulated or multiplied by this factor of this screening effect. So this is nothing but a screening effect factor of due to Coulomb's interaction okay. So uh, and from here you can actually see that if x2 minus x1 is very very large than lambda d finally this term is actually negligibly small thereby just making this term negligibly small okay. So in I mean in practice for uh, for the case where we are talking about collisionless systems we can simply neglecting g12 and we can write the kinetic equation which is del f1 del t so f1 once again this simply designates that this is the distribution function of one particle okay del f1 del t plus u1 dot nabla x1 f1 plus f by m dot nabla u1 f1 is equal to 0 okay so this is the Vlasov's equation now we also know that a Vlasov's equation does not reduces to a plasma in thermal equilibrium that means it never leads to a Maxwellian in principle but we have a good news if we consider a specially homogeneous plasma then it is actually still possible to solve for f1 that means the single particle distribution function even after including g and one then gets f1 as a function of u1 and t although this f is not necessarily maxwellian i am just writing this not necessarily maxwellian okay but in long in large times this will tend towards a maxwellian distribution and this equation uh, when we are talking about a specially homogeneous plasma the uh, uh, corresponding evolution equation for the single particle distribution function is known as leonard balescu equation it was derived by leonard and balescu both in the year of 1960 okay and this one basically relaxes toward maxwellian so that was the thing that even for a system okay uh, i mean which is not really um, collisionless which is collisional we can actually still uh, do something very uh, I mean easy like like we do in case of a Vlasov's equation that means we can uh, directly start from the very uh, beginning with a only velocity dependent single particle distribution function and it actually tends towards Maxwellian but then we have to use leonard Valesco equation and this is a special case of Foucault-Planck equation. A foucault planck equation is a class of equations where collision is not neglected at all but it is modeled as a diffusion in velocity space. Okay. Once again foucault planck equation is very important for plasma physics in general but for the current scope of this, of this course, well it is just I am giving you as an information. If you are interested you can search further. Okay. Now, I mean, so that that's we that we said that how to do this. Uh, I mean, analytically, how to simplify a plasma just by assuming this to be spatially homogeneous. Now, uh, for a collisional non-vlasov plasma, I mean, that means a collisional uh, plasma which is uh, which actually should really relax to a Maxwellian distribution we can effectively think to derive fluid equations from Vlasov equation as well. Okay, we don't have to go through leonard palescu but directly Vlasov's equation under a certain condition where we are considering perturbations of very high frequency. And that means within this perturbation frequent time period, 
almost no collisions are there. So the system is very much collisional, but finally we can still consider our basic kinetic equations to be Vlasov's equation just by thinking that the frequency of the perturbation is of very very high value. Okay, so the period is very very small. Now, since the plasma is consisting of singly charged ions and electrons, of course in principle plus neutrals, but they are these two charged species, we can actually derive separate fluid equations for both. Actually for plasma, I mean for ion you have single fluid evolution equation as Fi, for electron you have Fe like this. Okay, so I am just writing in case you forget Fi, Fe like this. And then that leads us to the obtention of two fluid model of plasma. Okay, now we have finally to integrate to get the macroscopic equations okay for each species this equation of course corresponding to several i mean different order of moments of velocity and then you know this is the i mean traditional prescription for obtaining macroscopic equations but the question is that practically we need equations where uh, we i mean uh, we we can part of the system with any arbitrary uh, frequency the frequency can be low actually okay then how to do that then we cannot use Vlasov's equation so in order to derive fluid equations for low frequency perturbations in principle we have to take the effect of collisions but once again analytically I mean handling the collision is a matter of I mean it's not a matter of joke okay so we do it for the time being heuristically and we simply say that we are no longer considering particle to particle collision effects, okay. So what we do, actually we think that, uh, I mean the particle to particle collisions are no longer considered here, okay. What we, what we consider is a very simplistic picture of the collision. And we say that the, we are more interested in the global effect of the collision. Then we just say that the collision effect, okay, at least the level of collision effect of the collision where we are interested is just the momentum exchange between the whole ion population and the whole in, uh, electron population due to their difference in the bulk velocities or the fluid velocities. So for every charge species you can actually define or derive a macroscopic velocity or fluid velocity okay and uh, if you can do that simply uh, there there will be a discrepancy in the fluid velocities of the electron population and the ion population and since the electrons are I mean lighter in nature when they will just encounter Okay, so the, once again, this is something uh, a very simplistic picture and uh, you can actually think like that. Um, so it is not really particle to particle collisions, but the global collision effect is that the total electrons are making a fluid, the ions are making a fluid and one is uh, coming across and, uh, the other and ions are mostly heavy they have almost the same number density as that of electrons at least i mean nearly same not ne not necessarily exactly the same and then but ions are heavier so electrons are just colliding with the ions and they are losing momentum okay so they are then losing momentum that's exactly the same thing when you have a i mean when you uh, like uh, trigger okay a uh, shell in the I mean from your revolver or something okay so I mean a bullet not I mean well <laughs> so that from a revolver you have a bullet okay so if, if you hit the bullet and uh, to, to let's say a wooden uh, board or something and the board is very massive okay so what happens then the uh, the I mean the revolver 
simply, I mean, the bullet simply loses uh, some amount of the uh, momentum to this massive and, uh, I mean, all uh, massive uh, wooden board which is at rest. Here the ions are not at rest in general, but they are much more bulky. So, electrons are much uh, losing their momentum, okay, to this ion population. And we just say that, that this is only the case of, uh, I mean, the gross effect of the collision, this momentum exchange between the ion, ion fluids and the electron fluids. Although the real story of uh, the collision is much more complicated. So in that case, what we can do, we can simply say that, just a minute before just going to that, it should not be, yeah, it should be Me as well, this is Me, the same amount, yeah. So here you see that the, uh, if, if, if you just consider this fact, then you will see that the, uh, after a few steps of st uh, straightforward algebra, you can finally uh, like derive the fluid equations for both the populations and this effect of collision which is of our primary interest here is given by simply this. Okay, So this is just an exchange term of the electron and ion fluids once again. So now this thing is nothing but the inertia term. So this is DDT that means there are two terms del del T plus VE dot nabla VE and of course there is VI dot nabla type of terms. So that you can easily understand. This is the electronic pressure. This is the ionic pressure. Okay. This is the low range force on electrons, low range force on the ions and this is the momentum exchange terms. This is the same momentum basically. So one is VE minus VI, one is VI minus V. So simply as you can see that here this will be uh, minus and this will be, uh, this will have a different sign. So this one is losing momentum, this one is gaining momentum in fact. Okay, this one is gaining that means that we have velo electronic velocities are much more, I mean important than the ionic velocity so that this total part is a, a gain in momentum for the ionic fluid. Okay. Now, uh, up to that, this was the two fluid models. So, uh, we have two separate fluids, one for the electrons, one for the ions. Okay. Then, for strongly ionized plasma, in general, what happens that locally, even locally, in I and in E, they are very much close and almost equal. And then you can actually add and subtract those two equations to find a representative uh, fluid which is not a real fluid but it's a representative fluid which globally represents the thing and this is called a monofluid okay monofluid model of the plasma then you do not have any longer the separate in I mean existence of the ionic electronic fluid or ionic fluid but it's a representative global fluid whose variables then are defined by this type of thing so the rho will simply be the common density times the total mass the ionic mass part ionic ion ion mass plus uh, i mean uh, ion, mass of one ion plus mass of one electron the velocity will simply be given by m i n i v i plus m e v e n e by m i n i and m e n e but since n i and n e they are the same then the actually one n is cancelled from numerator and denominator and you can simply see this is the center of mass velocity. So pressure is just algebraic sum of the ionic pressure and the electronic pressure. Okay. Now uh, finally if you introduce this and if you just uh, so so of course although here you don't have to forget that uh, here we are just talking in terms of the momentum evolution equation but for every single uh, species you have actually a continuity equation but this continuity equation should not look like very simple as that actually just because I mean it is too detailing but I'm just saying that every continuity equation should look like this plus divergence of so for example this is for the ions vi 
is equal to SI where SI is the source of ions. So the source of ions are non-zero in a, in a plasma. Okay. But of course, if you are thinking that there is no longer production of ions and electrons, then this is also zero. Okay. And the same thing for the electrons, you have an equation like this. And finally, you add them up and you will get, if you do that um, algebra very carefully, you will see that it will, it will give you a combined equation for the global monofluid variable. So uh, you have a um, single fluid continuity equation. In the same way, if you add these two equations, you will get the evolution, momentum evolution equation for the resultant fluid, which has rho times del V del T plus V dot nabla V. Once again, V is the monofluid velocity is equal to minus gradient of P plus J cross B. Now, J is the current density, which is nothing but NE VI minus VE, okay, cross B, okay plus mu times nabla square v plus this i mean of course there should be a rho i forgot to write the rho okay this is the body force so body force terms actually i did not include here but it can be included anytime okay i have just written because most of the cases uh, in astrophysics we write this okay and then if you subtract these two equation you will get so if you Add this to equation, you will get the evolution for this uh, bulk velocity. If you subtract these two equations, as you can easily understand, you will get an evolution equation for the current. And actually, there will be so this is known as generalized Ohm's law. After doing some order analysis, which is not very, very simple, <laughs> but okay, but uh, they are sufficiently useful, okay you can simplify considerably the, the total evolution equation where finally the del j del t term is no longer existing and it simply gives you a constraint between the e b and j field and this is known as the very practical form of generalized Ohm's law e plus v cross v is equal to j by sigma okay and you have your Faraday's law from Maxwell's equation okay so if you just uh, like uh, replace your uh, electric field by this equation you will simply get uh, something like this del v del t is equal to curl of v cross b plus curl of curl of b because uh, mu zero sigma because curl of b is equal to mu zero j okay since uh, the displacement current displacement current is neglected here and if you again do uh, expand this you will simply have something like minus nabla square b by mu zero sigma and then this one by mu zero sigma you can call it up that we uh, as we will discuss in the next lecture that will be the magnetic diffusivity. Now for the closure we can again go to the energy equation as we did it for normal fluids but we can also close for the simplicity at least for our astrophysical context close the system at this position just by saying that this is polytropic in nature. Okay. Now you see that this total sets of equation they are called the monofluid equations of a plasma or the magnetohydrodynamics equation. Why magnetohydrodynamics? Because they are, uh, I mean, uh, the, the charge densities, they are very, very equal. So locally, the electric force part is uh, absent. So you see that the, there in, the, in the low range force component, there is no electrostatic part. So only magnetic part is there. That's why we are actually saying and actually even in this case you can easily see that the total E is also removed by V cross B and some nabla square type uh, B times eta. Okay. So the I mean we don't need the information about electric field when we are talking about this magnetohydrodynamics. That's why it is called magnetohydrodynamics and not electromagnetohydrodynamics. Okay. So 
And last thing is that it is uh, useful to understand that uh, in uh, so magnetohydrodynamics mo magnetohydrodynamic model is actually valid so let's say if we, if if our system is such that the ions are not actually moving then what will happen that the electrons are primarily moving and then the fluid is no longer uh, a monofluid model okay then this is not possible to um, how to say to maintain the charge quasi neutrality every at every point in space so what do we do so this is also i mean not charge neutrality actually this is all also the equality in the number density at every point in in the flow okay so in the plasma so what is needed it is needed that so if you just uh, try to understand the physical part that so that the charge neutrality or the number density equality is maintained uh, very properly at every point in space the requirement is that the ions we, we should be interested in such length scales and in such time scales in which the bulky ions are also moving and uh, when the ions are moving the electrons are actually uh, following them if this is true then only we can talk about the charge neutrality at every point or the equality in number density and this is only possible when we are interested in the length scales beyond the so called ion inertial length scale so ion inertial length scale is the length scale um, beyond which you can see the uh, ion particles to move let's say uh, let me just give you an example and 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 okay okay for the time scale it is the same you have to uh, be interested in a time scale which is greater than the one by the plasma frequency time scale okay the electronic plasma frequency time scale so just i am giving you an example let's say you and uh, four of your uh, you and or some of your friends are uh, going to um, just to walk okay in a garden and one of your friend has a problem in leg maybe he has he is being he has been injured okay so he cannot walk today for some reason and he cannot uh, put the rhythm with the others now then uh, if you if you just say okay no problem i mean okay there can be two approaches one is that you just say oh, we don't care about this person okay and we just maintain our um, original rhythm of walking then he will be lagged behind now if you say okay hey we are all friends and we have to take care of this guy so we will go together today so everyone actually say that okay we are not in hurry so no problem so we should go together then you are everyone is actually waiting till the your uh, friend is moving okay so this is uh, when you are waiting so that means actually you are uh, waiting for a long time your waiting period is long i mean so your movement is also getting slowed down right so that is the essence of magnetohydrodynamics now you can say that okay we have the intelligence or smartness we have to slow down but how do electrons do so actually what happens that electrons are nothing electrons are not slowing down their movements but their movements are much more uh, so they have some drift motion but their movements are much more thermally uh, dominated because they are always uh, their temperature is high and their mobility is very high so they are mostly uh, i mean randomly moving so what happens if you are actually waiting for very long time the ions are moving in a specific direction okay due to its inertia in a specific direction a bit electrons what happens that they are in the meantime they are moving here and there but if if it is so i mean if we were i mean waiting for long basically the random motions with respect to the ions is becoming negligibly small it's almost about when you are uh, just checking the uh, motion of the seconds uh, i mean the motion of the hours hand okay then what happens and then you see that okay when the one hour is completed then again the seconds motion okay is again get, uh, getting up i mean to its original position it doesn't say that the, the second was 
slowed down or it it did not move at all that simply means that in the whole um uh, period or whole interval of time its movement is averaged out okay then what happens that the total picture gives us that the bulky uh, electrons they are just uh, sorry bulky ions they are just moving slowly and electrons are because their random motions are averaged out they are simply uh, following the ions as a background okay and that's exactly the picture uh, of magneto hydrodynamics okay and if you if you can imagine that picture then you are all set for studying magneto hydrodynamics okay so this is the this is an estimate of the ion inertial length scale okay and this is the time scale which is 1 by fpi i i said maybe electron uh, time but it should not be electron time it should be ionic uh, plasma frequency sorry because ionic plasma frequency is greater yeah so uh what happens yeah so the this one is given by the sound i mean the light speed by the uh, ionic plasma frequency okay and uh, the time is of course 1 by fpi or you can write 1 by omega pi this is not much different you can also use here c by fpi that is just an order they are of the same order so that's not i mean does not change things drastically drastically so uh, the thing is that uh, so magneto hydrodynamics or the monofluid model is valid for a plasma for uh, under two situations one is that the uh, i mean the charge neutrality or the um, equality in number density is there followed or they are obeyed at every point okay and for that what happens that we have to choose length scales and time scales which are very long okay and as you will see that it is simply saying that or the perturbations so in magneto hydrodynamics is the uh, regime where we are only uh, interested in the low frequency uh, of the perturbations okay and um, or large scales and the same thing actually happens when we will talk about the turbulence okay then if the then of course we will not talk about the length scale but we will talk about the fluctuation length scales okay so uh, this is all about the mm, a very brief guided tour of from kinetic to the fluid theory and actually monofluid theory of magneto hydrodynamics in the le next lecture i will start discussing different properties of an mhd fluid and conservations wave modes etc etc okay thank you very much